What's going on everyone? It's Ozzy from Ossex Hardware rocking the uh, barf colored shirt. And today I have another used budget alternative for you guys. Generally speaking, the Ryzen 3 lineup and the Pentium lineup are regarded as the best budget CPUs if you're building a brand new gaming computer, and I completely agree. They offer great performance at a price of $100 to $120 for the Ryzen 3 series and about $60 to $80, $85 for the Pentium series. Both of them provide solid upgrade paths. The Pentium gives you an i5 or an i7 later on in the future, and then the Ryzen series CPUs give you up to eight cores and 16 threads and possibly even more considering that the AM4 platform is going to be supported until 2020. So we might even see more cores and more threads later on. And while both of these lineups give you pretty solid performance at a very cheap price, you can go even cheaper if you dive into the used market. So I want you guys to meet the i5-3550 or more generally, any Ivy Bridge i5 out there. The i5-3470 goes for about 50 to 60 bucks on sites like eBay and even cheaper at your local classifieds or in websites such as Reddit's Hardware Swap. The Xeon 1220 series is also a great option. It's essentially a locked i5 without the integrated graphics chip, so it totally works just as well as your standard i5 would. I bought my i5-3550 for about $45 a year ago, which was a great deal, by the way, considering that AMD hadn't released Ryzen at the time. And I used it for a year and it worked completely great before I upgraded to my current Ryzen 7 system. These $60 chips have flooded the used market lately and they give you solid performance, a solid price, and a great foundation for upgrades later. They're not as good as your AM4 platform or your Intel LGA 1151 or 50 platforms, but they're still pretty awesome. Although Sandy Bridge is probably the slowest generation of processors I would recommend for a modern day gaming computer, especially if you're going in the used market, it's still a very viable option. The i5-2400 is only about $35 to $45 on eBay today, and it gives you great performance for its price. The reason why I went Ivy Bridge instead of Sandy Bridge is because Ivy is only slightly more expensive and it has better power consumption. It has slightly better IPC, not by much, but only a little bit better and it has a slightly better clock speed. So the culmination of all of that will give you better performance and better performance per watt. And honestly, if you're considering a used i5, you probably need all the performance that you can squeeze out. So get the Ivy Bridge if you can. If not, the Sandy Bridge is still perfectly fine. What I love most about picking up a used i5 is the fact that the motherboards are not absurdly priced. Older server Xeons or high-end desktop Xeons are affordable, but their motherboards aren't. And that almost defeats the purpose of picking up a budget processor in the first place because your entire platform is not as cheap as you would like. Most budget LGA 1155 motherboards go for around $40 to $50 today, and you can even get new ones for as low as $40 on sites like AliExpress. And then to add to that, you also have cheaper memory because DDR3 memory is not as expensive as DDR4 memory today. And almost ironically, a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR3 will run you about the same price as an 8 gigabyte kit of DDR4 memory. So you could even upgrade if you wanted to. Of course, picking up a used i5 doesn't come without drawbacks, and most of the drawbacks come from the platform itself. You are locked on a dead socket that won't be upgraded. Granted, you do have some pretty awesome upgrades. Really, it's just the i7s that will keep the socket alive, and that's enough for most games today and more than enough for a lot of entry-level video editing, rendering, and multitasking, but still something to consider. We have platforms now with six cores and eight cores, and eventually it's gonna come to 10 cores are gonna be on mainstream platforms, and you're not gonna be able to get to those simply because of the socket that you're on. You're also missing out on newer technologies such as USB 3.1, the new PCIe standards, and the M2 form factor for storage devices. And at the rate that games are moving, hyper-threaded quad cores seem to be the new mainstream standard, and unfortunately, that's the maximum that you can reach on the socket like I already explained. And then the i5 only has four cores and four threads, so right then and there, you're already locking yourself down to something that's not going to be as powerful in the future but again for $60 you got to kind of weigh the pros and cons with all of that being said let's look at the benchmarks because I know that's the important part that you guys are all 
worried about. So let's do that. For my i5 test bench, I have the processor, 16 gigs of DDR3 memory and dual channel running at 1600 megahertz and a GTX 1060 six gigabyte. For my Ryzen system, I have the Ryzen 3 1300X at 3.8 gigahertz and 3.4 gigahertz to simulate the Ryzen 3 1200's boost clock. The 1060 six gigabyte and 16 gigs of DDR4 memory at 2933 megahertz in dual channel. I chose the 1066 gigabyte because I believe it's the fastest video card I can recommend for processors of this nature. Because of potential GPU bottlenecks, I also included 720p benchmarks too. I tested a variety of games and software to give you guys a balanced look at the CPU's performance and gaming performance too. And without any further ado, here are the benchmarks. As you can see, the 1300X at 3.4 gigahertz, which simulates the 1200, like I mentioned earlier, trades blows with the i5-3550 when it's at its boost frequency of 3.7 gigahertz. After I overclocked the 1300X to 3.8 gigahertz, it won by up to 14%, depending on the game and the resolution. Now, considering that the i5-3550 costs anywhere from 45 to about 65% cheaper than the Ryzen 3, I would say it's a pretty awesome bang for your buck purchase. You're not losing a lot of performance and you're still saving a lot of money. But like I said earlier, with the i5, you're losing support, you're losing your newer features and standards, and you're losing a better upgrade path and functionality. And then you have other options that you have to consider as well, such as the AM4 Athlon CPUs from AMD. And although they're about 20 to 25% slower than the i5, they offer an awesome upgrade path with the AM4 platform that will be supported by AMD until 2020. And in a similar vein, you have the Pentium G series, which are about 20 to $25 more expensive, but similar to the Athlon AM4 CPUs, they have have a great upgrade path. Not as good as the AM4 platform, but still much better than the LG A1155 socket. So you really gotta weigh your pros and cons. Are you willing to lose all of that for 50 to $100 saved? Now my recommendation is simply this. If you're building a gaming computer for like $300 or less, if you don't wanna do the whole pre-built power supply and new video card tactic that I've talked about several times on this channel. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. It's like beating a dead horse at this point almost. If you don't wanna do that, but you only have about 300, $350 to spend, then I would recommend going the i5 route. If you have more than $350 to spend on a gaming computer, let's say you're in the 400s or the higher 300s, then I recommend going new. Just pick up an Athlon X4950, a B350 motherboard, eight gigs of RAM, and something like a GT1030, or possibly a used video card just to hold you off. And the reason why I say that is because while the i5 computer will probably give you better raw performance with all of the used parts that it has and the cheaper prices that those have, this one gives you extended support, newer features, all of that stuff. AM4 is gonna be supported until 2020, so you're guaranteed to get all of the newer features, you're guaranteed to get all of the newer processors that are gonna be coming out, so you have a much better upgrade path and it's better prepared for newer games and newer software. I'm planning to build a $300 gaming computer without any pre bolts and using the i5, and I'm gonna battle it against the brand new $300 computer that I just built. Now, I already know which one's gonna win, but it's gonna be interesting nonetheless, and I can't take the credit for this idea. Somebody commented on that video and gave me the idea, so credit to you. I don't quite remember your name right now, but yeah. 
thanks for the new video idea. But if you guys like this video, leave a like. If you loved it, share, subscribe, all of that stuff. If you have any questions, then just comment down below. Uh, check out my Discord, 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 there we go. Check out my Discord if you have uh, any extensive questions or if you just wanna hang out with the community. Um, we're pretty friendly over there, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.